our Muslim brothers in Palestine, they welcomed the Jews when they were kicked out from Germany. They said, Alan was silent, come and stay with us. What do they do? They keep on encroaching the land of the Muslims. They were a small percentage. In 1947, they take nearly half of it. In 1968, they take more than three-fourths. And now they are occupying most of it. And they call it Israel. And when the, pal you know, imagine if there is a generous man who sees a traveler on the road who doesn't have a home, he says, come into my house, stay. After a few days, that traveler kicks the owner of the house outside. And if the owner, ha owner of the house is shouting, please give my house back, the traveler tells him, you are a terrorist. This is what's happening. The Muslim brothers in Palestine, they welcomed the Jews. Alan was silent. They kick him out, and now they're calling them terrorists. Most, almost all the countries in the world are against, except few countries like USA supporting them. They are giving veto in the UN. What's happening? Nothing. Alhamdulillah, almost all the Muslim countries were united against Palestine. But now, lately, there are some Muslim countries which are defending Palestine. What's happening to Ummah? In Palestine, they are saying, we are doing war on terror against the Palestinians. The Palestinians are throwing stones. They are attacking with guns and bombs. We have the example in Rohingya, in Myanmar. If you want to eliminate the Muslims, only say war on terror. Very easy. Say war on terror. Say the Muslims are terrorists. Butcher them. Massacre them. The full world is looking, doing nothing. MashaAllah, there are few countries which are vocal about it. One of them is Turkey. The other is Malaysia. Very few. We know we cannot use the first category of stopping with the hand. So at least we are trying to stop with the tongue. Do you know today, I would like to ask you a question. Today, which Muslims in the world are persecuted the maximum? Can you guess? Muslims in which part of the world are persecuted the maximum? Can you guess? From where? Myanmar. Palestine. According to me, today, maximum that Muslims have been persecuted is in Xinjiang, China. Uyghur Muslims. Yes, Muslims are being persecuted in Myanmar a lot, in Palestine a lot, but in China, it is on different levels. At least in Palestine, the Muslims can pray Salah. Correct? They can say Allah Akbar. They can fast. They can read the Quran. They can get the contentment in their heart. They are being persecuted without doubt. But in China, they are systematically trying to exterminate them. If you know history, in the middle part of the 20th century, you know, a lot of part of Turkey was taken over by the countries. Some part was taken by Russia, and this part, Xinjiang, was taken over by China. They are actually Turkish people, Eastern Turkestan and they made it part of China illegally and many countries are doing that you can easily make out the difference you can look at their face and tell them these are not Chinese but, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed that land with rich minerals it has got wealth so China is trying its level best 
to see to it that Muslims are exterminated from there. And they started in 2015, according to reports. It wasn't known to the world. It came out, some of the human rights organization came to know in 2016, and it came out in the media in 2017. It started coming out. It became more popular in 2018. What do they do? There are two types of Muslims in China. One is the, is the Uyghur Muslims. The other is the Han Muslim. The Han Muslim, the Chinese Muslim. They have problem, but very less compared to the Uyghur Muslims. Because the Han Muslim look like Chinese, they have problems, but compared to the Uyghur Muslims, very little. The Uyghur Muslim nowadays, most of them cannot even offer Salah. They are not allowed to fast. They are forced to have food during Ramadan. Many are forced to have alcohol. They aren't allowed to learn Arabic. And if they don't listen to the authorities, they are put into concentration camps. The Chinese government says this is re-education. Re-education. Many of the Uyghur Muslims in these concentration camps, they are tortured. They are harassed. They are asked to give up the religion. They are asked to follow communism. And those that are outside, they are being tracked by cameras, by face recognition. And this has been leaked by the human organization. Almost all of them, they are non-Muslim organization. So much so that one month before, in July, there were 22 countries that wrote a letter to UN objecting on the human rights violation against the Uyghur Muslim in China. 22 countries. There are about 195 countries in the UN. 22 countries wrote a letter to UN saying there is human rights violation in China against the Uyghur Muslims. And do you know, out of these 22 countries, there was not a single Muslim country which objected. All of them were non-Muslim country, mostly European country. Isn't it a shame? There are about 56 countries in the world, 20, more than 25% of the countries in the world, they have majority Muslims. It were 22 non-Muslim countries who objected to the violation of human rights in Uruguay. And when interviews were taken of some of the heads of states, and some did say that Muslims are weak, it will not benefit as much to object. To tell you the fact, they may be right. What they're doing if you did not object and kept quiet, they may be using the rule of the Sharia, let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. The Sharia gives you permission in Islam, it's usul, that let a small loss take place to, to prevent a big loss. If you think by objecting, you will not get any benefit, but there may be retaliation, there may be problem in your country, and if you do not take the best or the second best option, of stopping with the hand, or stopping with the tongue, you remain silent. This, if the situation is like that really, 
that if you object, there may be retaliation. And if you take the decision of keeping quiet, Sharia gives you permission. That among the 56 countries, no one had the guts. But 22 non-Muslim countries had the guts. Here the story doesn't end. The story which is really disheartening is, few days later, 37 countries give a letter to UN saying what the Chinese government is doing is correct. They are not torturing the Muslims. They are not violating human rights. They are educating them. They are doing anti-terrorism. 37 countries. Out of these 37 countries, 15 countries were Muslim countries. More than 40% of the countries we supported China, saying that what you are doing is right against the Muslims, what you are touching them is correct, it is anti-terrorism, they were Muslims. Alhamdulillah, Malaysia wasn't one of them. I don't want to take the names of the country which gave a letter because I want to wake up the Muslims. By Allah's grace, I meet the heads of most of these countries. Whenever I meet head of state, my job as a da'i is to convey the message of Allah. Whether they follow or not, it's in their hand. I don't want to take their names because I don't want to embarrass them. But my request to the heads of states of this country that our beloved prophet said, if any Muslim is in problem, it is like if one part of the body is in problem, the, all the rest part, all the cells go to defend it. This is the ummah. If any Muslim, he may be in any other part of the world, he's a Muslim, he's your brother in faith, you have to support him. How can you support the enemies of Islam just for a small benefit? This is not permitted in the Sharia. Keeping quiet, accept it. We are weak, you are keeping quiet. You may be the lowest level of mu'min, but yet you are a mu'min. But supporting a kafir who is killing